I came across character effect shader pack while looking for shaders to turn a character into stone or ice and this seems to provide both so as you can see over here that statue effect is exactly what I'm looking for and it has a nice ice effect as well so I'm going to be testing this out on unity chan which is my favorite model and let's see if it's worth that $30 price tag and if it's easy enough to use Okay, I've created a new project and open up the sample scene under assets character effects sample scene and that is character effects sample scene and I'm going to press play because this is a great demo that they've got set up if you click on any of the buttons on the left that will focus in on one of the characters that's been set up and the first one is beamer you click on beam out and this is like a Star Trek teleport type thing so that's the beam out you can beam in that's a very cool effect the custom effect is just changing colors on this model uh, stoner that's turning a character into stone and back is the one I'm really interested in so let's see if I click uh... okay so that was already petrified so if I click petrified that turns it to stone and that's a very very cool effect uh, hologram is next I'm going to click on power up you can see what happens there that's very cool and power down spirit is just a plain model uh, there's no other effects added onto this so this is a ghostly effect with uh, nice little glowing outline applied to that frozen is the other one i'm interested in which crystallizes this guy to look like ice you can see there's a nice translucent effect there and it really looks like ice and you can throw it out again so let's see how easy this is to apply to unity chan oh by the way this is done there's a bunch of custom scripts that's been added to each of these guys which we can reuse so Let's see how easy it is to reuse on our character or Unity's character, I should say, Unity Chan. The documentation consists of this readme file, which explains what each of the shaders do and uh, what the parameters do as well. So this is absolutely fine for the shaders themselves. However, there are some scripts that are meant to help you apply these shaders at runtime. The problem is, this is the extent of that documentation. It's a scripts.txt file. It gives you some direction on how to apply this at runtime. And you can have a look at the demo scene to give you more of an idea on how to do that. But the problem there is that that lerps model that they've got just consists of one mesh. And now trying to apply it to Unity Chan, this consists of multiple meshes. So that was quite different. And I struggled quite a bit to get this right. At the end of the day, I had to end up looking at the source code to figure out how to apply this or how to apply their scripts uh, and get it working. And I'm going to give you an overview on how I did that. To get these scripts working at runtime, you need to select your model. <laughs> choose the place to add in this script it's called stone controller i just chose the root of unity chan to edit in there's this list of stoneable objects now what those are are your meshes so unity chan is composed of all these meshes it's under mesh root you'll see a button cheek etc all of these are different meshes and you can select all of those and add the stone script onto them for each of the stone script, there's this renderer uh, property over here that you need to set and that is whatever has the, the mesh renderer and it just so happens that this is uh, the actual object that I added my stone script onto. So you can just drag that, in this case it's the button, you drag it onto it and that's all you need to do. Once that is done, you select the place where you added your stone controller and you can then drag in all of your stonable objects okay now the change I made I'm well I made it some changes just to test this thing out and you'll see here I added in an update method just to get the mouse button down to call the stone to stone method which will in turn find all your stonable objects and then apply that stone effect to it Another change I needed to make was instead of changing each of these items and let me just show you what I mean. If I select the legs for example 
and go to the material so that's the body material here in this case i'm just going to select all the materials and show you what happens if you just apply the shader immediately so i selected character and say statue pbr okay so the main property here is the diffuse and you can see if i set that to one it does not look good it just makes it this dull looking thing just off the bat so i'm going to undo that and what i ended up doing was going into the stone script i added properties for shader and texture for the actual bump map and i set that on startup so i set the diffuse amount for the shader well i set the shader for each material to that shader in this case for example i am using the statue pbr shader which is what gives it that stone effect and then the diffuse amount property on that shader itself so if i go to that shader where is it statue pbr there's a bunch of uh, properties over here and that is this underscore diffuse amount property that i'm setting and that i'm setting to one which means don't really apply anything at the moment and then i set the bump map to make it looks look like something because otherwise it just ends up looking like a smooth gray thing which doesn't look any good so now if i run this and press uh, let's just go and press play and i click you'll see it transitioning to that stone shader and that looks quite good you can see the bump map is applied if i zoom in and it looks like a statue i forgot about the eyes but that's fine it gives it a nice creepy looking thing it's still blinking <laughs> creepy effect okay so that's that i think i'm going to end up using this for my next project okay, so all in all i think this is a cool uh, cool asset but uh, the documentation does need some work it was not that easy to get into and for that reason i would say it's for intermediate unity users you have to kind of dig around the code and know a bit more about the art side of unity but it has some awesome effects and i will be using this in future quite excited about it and definitely worth the price for me i hate writing shaders i did some courses and that's about it and i know that it's definitely not for me so this was definitely worth the price this is exactly what I was looking for and I'll be using this in conjunction with Rayfire next to show you how to freeze and smash a non-player character to bits in my next video. So keep an eye out for that. Until next time guys, enjoy.